It's not like any other job. For Bill Pitts and his team, it's 9-11 from 9 to 5, and often longer. They watch the planes strike the World Trade Center again, again, and again. And then they watch as the buildings burn and fall down. I mean, we've seen it so much, we've probably looked at it more than just about anybody in the world. Pitts is a scientist at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST for short. The U.S. government has asked NIST to investigate why the towers collapsed so that buildings can be made stronger in the future. Most experts agree it was the fire spread by burning jet fuel that brought down the twin towers. The fire heated the structural steel, weakening it, starting a catastrophic failure. But there are competing theories on how the fire affected the metal and which steel components gave way first. NIST researchers are modeling the impact of the jets, the spread of the fire, and the collapse of the towers in detailed computer simulations. To do that, they need the image analysis provided by Bill Pitts and his team. Image analysis is allowing us to learn a lot about the interaction of the building and the airplane. The reason this is important it's because it's going to tell us, hopefully, what the initial damage done by the airplane was. We hope to look, get insights into what the um, airplane itself did as it entered the building, which is going to ultimately determine what the fire growth is. It's going to determine where the fuel distribution, initial fuel distribution was in the building. And that's going to allow us to learn more about what the fires ultimately did. What we're looking at is a still frame of a video that was shot on September 11th. And the reason it's of particular interest to us is because it was shot on a tripod, which means that the image is very stable and lets us do various types of image analysis to it. So when I play it, what you're going to see is the plane strike from the left, and then you're going to be able to see all the motion associated with that plane strike. And we, we, there's a lot going on here, which includes the fires that are formed after the plane hit, the plume that's formed by the um, plane striking. Um, you see it just... Everywhere you look at detail, it tells us something about what happened on September 11th through this building. One of those details is the speed of the aircraft, something that's essential to modeling the structural damage. By taking that video, shot at 30 frames a second, and scrutinizing tiny details in each frame, Bill has come up with one of the most accurate estimates of the speed of the plane that hit Tower 2. And the way we do it is to measure the location on the photograph of both the nose and the tail as it appears, as you can see here. And then knowing the length of the aircraft and the time it takes to move from one location to the other, that's the way we're going to determine the speed of the aircraft. In the end, the answer is straightforward, 560 miles per hour. That same piece of video can tell Bill Pitts how the building moved during the plane strike. The image of the building, whether it's moving or not, creates a weird optical effect of curved lines on the video. And they're due to an interference pattern that arises between the lines that are actually on the building associated with the windows and columns on the building and the pixels that are, are the individual elements within the camera that um, is taking the photograph. Those two interfere, and the net result is what you see here, are these patterns passing across the building. We're going to take an initial image, which is the very first image in, in the video that I'm going to show you, and subtract it from all the additional images. And that's what we're showing over here. And we've already done it, and that's why we're seeing black now. So when we start to play it, what's going to show up is the differences between the images. So as I play it, we'll see the plane coming in again from the left. We'll see it approaching the building. And as it enters, you start to see changes in the building almost immediately. Now, these initial changes were due to pressure changes. But as time goes by, you begin to see these lines spreading across the building. These are exactly the same lines we saw before. But they've been enhanced now because we're looking at the difference. So as the building moves, these lines show up very distinctly because the building has changed. Sped up, that same video also reveals that Tower 2 behaved like a giant tuning fork. When the image blacks out, that's when the tower is swaying through its starting point. Bill Pitts has found out that the tower swayed back and forth once every 11.3 seconds and that the movement lasted for four minutes. Knowing how far the tower swayed might reveal what happened inside the building when the plane entered. How far it did sway, Bill won't say. He's still working on it. But there are other details he's willing to share. Okay, what we're showing here is the plane coming in from the left. I'm going to stop it right here. And you can see what appears to be a light appearing right in this area, while the rest of the building is still dark. What that tells us right away is that the building actually hasn't moved yet, and yet we're still seeing this light area. And what we think has happened here is that we're actually seeing pressure waves pass across the windows in the building. 
as a result, it changes the reflection of the light striking them. That shows up as a difference, and we can actually track the, the entrance of the airplane into the building in this way. The team has used video analysis to track how the fires moved through the two towers. One of the ways they've done this is to catalog the location of each flaming window, carefully matching it with time code embedded in the videos. What we're trying to do is learn to the highest degree possible where the fires were, how intense they were, and this is going to allow the people who are trying to model the fires, first of all, to have something to compare with, but also to have some idea of how intense the fires were so they can begin to make predictions of the temperature. The hope is that a detailed play-by-play -play of the disaster will emerge from these models, pinpointing structural weaknesses in the design of the towers, and then NIST can make recommendations to the building code. Though Bill Pitt's work might actually end up saving lives someday, that doesn't make the job any easier. You tend to put yourself there. I mean, we've seen it so much. All of us have that are doing this in this room. And it really is hard because you tend to think a lot about what the people went through that day. There's just no way to avoid it. You get used to it. You try not to think about it too much because if you did, you wouldn't be able to do your job. But it's there. And you, you see things and you see threatened things repeatedly. And it, it can be very, very difficult. And it's sometimes really, really hard to separate yourself from it. But you have to do it because we do feel the job we're trying to do is important. Not every image makes it into the database. Only useful ones do. So far, the video analysis team has collected almost 6,000 still photographs and about 150 hours of video. The job of combing through it all is far from over.